Okay. Right, today I want to talk a little bit about the um, fab filter. Kind of how I'm using it and uh, making use of the dynamic range and uh, a bit like kind of multi compression that the um, fab filter has. Um, what I kind of do to uh, put it on my kicks, my bass, and all the other elements of the track to make sure uh, we're not getting any uh, clashing or in any of the filters without the track. So, this is a drum and bass track I'm working on at the moment. So doing a So I've got kind of all my drums and uh, what I want to kind of do is look at seeing now I'm just starting to level and put everything into place. So I've already got the kick and I've got like loads of, um, already got compressors and EQs and utilities, putting everything into it, into mono. So you can see here on the kick, I've already kind of made some um, EQ adjustments. Whereas you can see that's just reducing where I want it to and I'll show you why I want it to be compressing there and ducking in those frequencies. All right, so if I go to the bass and I put a fab filter on that as well, what I want to do is analyze something else within the track. So in this case, I want to analyze it against everything else. <laughs> see uh, these red areas on each element that I've got here where I've got a fab filter put on it will appear here so as long as I've got a fab filter on the instrument like here the snare one I'm going to the bass go to the pre and post you can see that I've got that snare there right, so I want to do I want to compare this bass which is quite heavy with the kick I'll just solo those two for a minute. So that bass is obviously quite huge. And I want to compare that to the, um, the two kicks going. So I can see straight here, like I've got that kick. I've already started to edit the kick where I've got the kick dipping. It's probably better off doing it the other way around, to be honest. But like I said, I've got that kick dipping where that bass is. You can see the kick going behind it in that red. So what I'll do, it's obviously putting a, um, I want to do it this way. I want to be ducking it there where I've got this red. So if I, if I take that down, the red will slowly or surely disappear. You don't want to lose it completely, obviously, but it's just an area where you're getting a bit of clash. So rather than just making a bigger or slower game, what you've got here is this dynamic EQ, your dynamic range. So I can pull that down, and rather than cutting the volume completely, that's kind of compressing in that frequency area. So I want that bass, maybe just, I don't know if I don't want the bass coming too much, the bass there. I just want it to dip a little bit. I'll, wipe, I'll shorten that up a little bit, and um, get a bit more of a square. So check for any um, unwanted sounds, those little owls. I'll duck that out a bit. Oh, so I might just put that pump a little bit as well. Cut it off. Widen that a bit. do that as well the other way I haven't just got to duck it I can also pump it
I've already pumped this bass up. I've got a BX Boom on there as well, which I love, which just instantly just gives me get around. You can choose kind of your, your area button like that, on that high mode. That just gives my bass a lot more pump as well. And I've obviously got it whacked into mono. Now that finally killed, probably stick a compressor on that as well now. Compress it a little bit. But that's how. You basically use a dynamic range, then you can do that with every other element. Like, I really want that. Listen to the track. See, I really want the bass to dominate on this track, so I think I'm rather gonna. that one to the bass line. That's not too pretty much there. I'm gonna widen it a little bit. So I've kept a bit of the that hattiness in that kick. So I kinda like it. Gives it a bit more groove. do that to the, some of the other elements in the track. Like, so I want the bass to dominate in this track. That's why I'm reducing the kicks more. So I want to then cross reference that this bass. You see what other instruments I've got that are whacking on that, affecting that bass line as well. I'm just gonna kind of go through now every single one of these little different elements I've got here. I've got loads of little bits I've just need. Like I said, I've thrown the idea out. Now I'm just going through and I'll do like a, a combing process where I just go from one track to the other and just literally clean each element out as much as possible. And then I'll rearrange all my levels because I'll get a lot more dynamic range out of all my sounds once I've gone into them. And there shouldn't be one track here without an EQ and compressor and all that on it so so that's what I'm going to sit and do now got loads of different I'll like, show what I've got on the track it's got a little that break needs obviously sorting my little skippy break some skips skip some fill so they all need EQing and sorting out always be careful as well watching your levels make sure you're not going any red if you get any red you can either just reduce it here in the main volume or stick out Stick a limiter on it or whatever you want to do to pull the volume down. Hats, I mean, you've got these are all 
I'll just go on each of my hats really and get rid of what I don't want. I don't want any of that lower stuff on the hats, obviously. So yes, yeah, I'm kind of at the start of my cleaning process. Well, that's a little bit about what I do with FabFilter, how I'm kind of using those dynamic EQs. Hope it's uh, useful. And if you have any questions, uh, just get in contact with me. Facebook, via YouTube, wherever. Have a great day.